So in this video, I'm gonna take a piece of boring clear acrylic just like this one, and I'm gonna turn it into this. It's really not that hard, and let me show you how. Hey, it's Steve, and I need to make a sign, so I thought it would be a good idea to, to create a second sign just to show you how to make these, because they're really easy, and they avoid that tendency to overcomplicate things with multi, multiple layers of acrylic or, or doing some kind of engraving and then trying to paint it. This is really easy because all you need is a diode laser or a CO2 laser and a bit of artwork and you can create one of these with a few cans of spray paint. So uh, let me show you how, how I did this one. I'll go you through step by step and I'll start with the design. So as far as design goes, I just whipped up this quick little sign in Kittle. And if you don't know what Kittle is, you can go click the link up above here and go watch the video I did when I reviewed it. But it's my design tool now. And it, it took me, I don't know, five minutes to create this. So it was pretty quick. And all I'm gonna do is export this as an SVG file and then move it over into Lightburn. So over in Lightburn now, I have my image loaded and you can see it looks pretty good, except that the circle is cross cutting through the lightning bolt and there's an easy fix for this. I'll just duplicate the lightning bolt itself and I'll also select the circle at the same time. So I have two things selected here and Lightburn has some really nice tools and one of them is this Boolean assistant and it has a few different algorithms it can use, union, intersection, subtract, there's two different kinds of subtracts. The first one, if I hover over it, you can see it leaves the line inside the lightning bolt, which is the opposite of what we want. So I'll pick the other one, which takes the outside. And I'll just select that and hit OK. And now I have my lightning bolt. Now, this image will be on the back of a piece of acrylic, so all the paint will be on the back, which means if I engrave it this way, it'll be backwards when I, when I do it. So you got to remember this, and I forget routinely, so don't feel bad if you do. Um, flip the image around and we'll we'll spray it this way and then when i flip it over you'll see that it's the right way around now as far as settings go uh, you can see 2000 and uh, 2000 millimeters a minute for the speed which is fairly slow and 100 percent power now i can get away with that slow speed that 2000 millimeters a minute at 100 percent power without worrying about doing any damage to the acrylic Blue diode lasers, and I'm gonna use the X-Tool S1, don't react with clear acrylic. Uh, so we're gonna take advantage of the fact that it will react to the protective film on the surface of the acrylic. And the acrylic I use has white film on one side and kind of translucent on the other side. So I'm gonna actually cut on the white side because it's absorbent enough to diode light to do the engraving, the cutting of the film without being so powerful that it goes through to the other side. and. That clear semi-transparent film, film on the other side will sometimes kind of react. If the acrylic is laying directly on a honeycomb, it actually, the beam actually hits the honeycomb and kind of heats it up and then mars the surface on the other side. We don't want that. So the way to solve that problem is uh, to take just some something to lift the acrylic off the honeycomb surface just slightly, it doesn't matter. So I'm using the, the little magnets that came with the X-Tool S1 honeycomb and I'm putting them underneath the acrylic and that's enough to keep that surface from getting damaged while I'm still able to cut the top surface. Try to get the material in the X-Tool S1. I'm just starting the job. This is a straight engrave, so this will take almost no time at all. I think it took about two minutes to get this done. So I've got the material engraved now and I just plunk it down on my workbench. I grab a, a weeding tool and I pull out the things that I want to do first, which is gonna be the, the brown slash black. So the circle and all the lettering. And I'm just gonna use uh, this Rust-Oleum paint, which seems to work pretty well. Very light coat here. Don't go over overboard with it. Otherwise you'll regret it. Uh, next on the list is to do the orange, peel off the, the outer ring of the lightning bolt and, and paint it. And uh, again, very light coat. And then finally I'll pull the lightning bolt uh, inner piece out and I'll paint that a nice uh, bright yellow. And, uh, and that's the painting job for, for the design. Then finally peel off all the remaining uh, plastic off the back, including all the, the inside of the letters. And then just do a white, uh, spray paint to cover the entire back. Now at any layer here, you can apply a second coat of paint if you need to. Do, do it before you peel off the plastic for the next layer though, of course. 
And you, you'll want to do this if maybe the paint was a little light or maybe you missed a spot or something. Uh, you'll actually see in my big reveal here that around the outer edge of the black circle and around a couple of the letters, you can actually see some of the orange paint creeping through. And arguably I should have done a, a second coat of brown before I went to the next layer. No matter, you can actually see what a mistake looks like this way. So we'll leave it at that. So hopefully you got something out of this video and saw how easy it is to take an ordinary piece of clear acrylic and turn it into something spectacular, even with a diode laser, which is notoriously hard. Uh, I'll put a list of new members up above here. And as that's scrolling by, if you did get value out of this video, click the thumbs up. That really helps the YouTube algorithm find the channel. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done that already as well. And we'll wind down. So get out there, make your world. And I hope to see you next time.